Lincoln. I'm a teacher. I've been a teacher for a very long time now. And um, in 2014, Rachel and I formed LDUX, which is Lancashire Dyslexia Information, Guidance and Support. I'm Rachel Gelder and I am a SENCO in a mainstream primary school. We've got quite high levels of SEN, but I am also a dyslexia specialist on the other half of LDIX. We've been working with Lexplore Analytics to develop a reading development and intervention programme. The programme is designed specifically to be a comprehensive package that covers a whole spectrum of reading abilities from struggling readers to fluent readers. So I suppose what you can say about Lexplore Intensive is that it's been designed by teachers for teachers. We both work in schools, we know how difficult it is to run interventions to help both your struggling readers and those readers who need to be challenged. So we've kind of built that into Lexplore Intensive. It's based upon the principles of letters and sounds, so it ties in nicely with all your phonics groups, it ties in with all the different phonics programmes you'll be doing within school, but we've also built in lots of memory work and other aspects that you can challenge your children with and help to build their confidence. Um, it, co it covers your EAL children and it covers lots of different children with additional needs and neurodiversity. I guess the other thing about it, dead easy to pick it up and run with it. It's all there for you, it's all planned, it doesn't require any planning, so you can just, as I said, pick it up and run with it. Yeah, we're really proud of it. If a pupil seems to be moving through the programme easily, would you move them on to the next level? Would you test again to see if they had progressed? Within Lexplore Intensive, um, it does actually mention at each level, you know, use your knowledge of the child, you know those children the best. If you feel that they need to move on at a faster pace, then that's completely fine. Um, there are areas that we say you should really try to make sure that you cover those. And again, that's laid out very, very simply. Go at the pace that the child is capable of. In terms of um, retesting, it's fabulous because I've got that um, initial data set that you've got at the very beginning and you can retest up to three times per year if you chose to. And the beauty of Lexplore um, screening tool is that it's so quick to do that you could do your whole school three times a year and it wouldn't impact on your curriculum. And with my Senko hat on, it's really great because it gives you that entry and exit data so you can see that child's progression by being able to retest throughout the school year. It's one of those things that if you have an Ofsted inspection, they want to say, well, how do you know it's working? Yeah. Well, actually we know because that's where they started. They've used Lexplore Intensive and this is where they are now. And it fits in beautifully with the smart target principle as well, that it is measurable from yeah. that. You know, it's simple, measurable, and you know, it, you can set realistic targets from that. You've got to have a, an education plan for an individual with IEP or pupil passport, there's lots of different terms for it. And those targets have to be smart targets. And again, you need to show that progression so you can do that really easily with the screening tool. I struggle to fit interventions in and I don't have a TA. Is there any way I can adapt the programme to do it in smaller groups or target more than one pupil at once? It is harder with the earlier um, levels, the red and the yellow levels, because they do seem to be quite individualised for, for children. It is possible, and there are hints and tips throughout where you can do that. Um, for the later levels, definitely, you could definitely do those in small intervention groups. In a child's school life, you'd have um, the children in key stage one will be doing their phonics time. You could have that like explore time that ran throughout school for 10 minutes each day if you, if you had that time to fit within your curriculum. And actually those more able readers who were higher up in the like, explore <coughs> intensive would be able to work independently at that time. And those children who were in the, um, who needed more support, you could work around and uh, give them the support on the days that you were able to. What if I can't do it every day? Will the programme work if I manage two to three times a week or five minutes instead of 10? At the end of the day, um, we're all professionals. We're all trying to fit too much of a curriculum into too short a space of time. 
we'd all quite like it. We always sort of think, oh, if we have a 37 hour day, we could probably get everything in that we need to. Use your judgment, be kind to yourself. At the end of the day, any level of work is better than no level of work. So do your best with it. In an ideal world, absolutely. Five, 10 minutes every day during the week. But you know, do what you can. And also I would say that we have very much designed this um, with the idea that anybody could pick this up and run with it. So if you had a parent that was particularly keen on supporting their child, absolutely give them some of that, uh, some of the excerpts from uh, Lexplore Intensive and allow them to do um, that at home with their children. Why are nonsense words so important? Nonsense words are really, really important for the simple fact that a lot of children <laughs> might have a very strong visual memory and they are actually remembering words as whole units. What the non-words actually tell us is that a child can effectively decode a word. So when you have a word such as nerfle, for example, um, then you're actually being able to see that that child can break down that word effectively to the mm, uh, or aspect and then uh, blend those together. So it is really, really vitally important for you as a practitioner to be able to unpick what the um, skills are that that child has got. And throughout Lexboard Intensive, we've tried mm -hmm. to give indications of why things have been included. Mm -hmm. So generally there is some description for each of the sections so that you know exactly why it's in there. What if a pupil really struggles on the red level? What approach would you suggest instead? We'd always go for multi-sensory techniques, which again, we've gone through a number of them throughout Lexplore Intensive, but by using all of the senses, you know, sight, sound, and that kinesthetic actual touch. So for instance, using physical letters or pebbles or alphabet pebbles and learning the alphabet that way and playing games, that's going to reinforce it. So it's the same with tricky words and high frequency words that's the way of trying to embed it and getting children to retain it. By using all the senses, they generally retain it much better. I think um, that's where the supporting document really comes into its own as well. That there's lots of hints and tips that you can try in there, that if it's not working one way, try a different way. Um, you're still using the same material ultimately, but you're approaching it from a different angle. And there is lots of um, support in, in the supporting document to help you with that. Do you have any suggestions for teaching a pupil struggling with tricky or high frequency words? The key thing is, and often, when a child's particularly tr struggling with um, high frequency words or tricky words, break things down, chunk them into smaller units, use the supporting document, which has got lots of hints and tips for multi-sensory ways of learning, um, and as Rachel said, we really can't stress more strongly how important a multi-sensory way of learning is for all children, but particularly for those children who are having difficulty in learning and retaining the information. What other strategies or interventions would you suggest using with Lexpo Intensive for struggling readers? Again, the supporting document does outline quite a few different kind of resources and hints and tips you can use. But I think the key one for me would be to use those memory techniques because whatever we're teaching children, it doesn't matter how many different resources we use or how many techniques we use, multisensory or otherwise, if they can't retain it, then they're not actually physically learning it. So if we can improve their memory, so doing lots of memory games is a great way of, of improving working memory particularly. And you can do that on a class basis. So you could do, I don't know, a game of I went to market or something like that and I bought and went around the classroom. Or there's quite a few resources that we've, we've mentioned within um, that supporting document that are cards that children can have sort of games that they play in pairs. Um, there's all sorts of different memory games that you can use to try and help children to retain. So I think that would be a, a key resource that I would use to kind of support it. I think particularly with the uh, memory games as well, they, they aren't things that have to take a lot of time and we all know money. that there aren't yeah, money and time. The things that we don't have in schools at the moment, 
and actually, you know, you can literally be queuing up to go for dinner or queuing up to go and wash your hands and you can throw a memory game in there and, you know, the value of those is, um, you know, they're just invaluable really because without retaining the information, you're not going to get anywhere further. How would you ensure a pupil is applying what they have learned to other reading or class lessons? Dictation is a really, really important tool that we can use as um, practitioners within schools to check children's learning. Um, it's kind of gone out of favour in some ways. It's still there in the national curriculum, but does get ignored by a lot of people. Um, and this can be done as infrequently as, as once a month, uh, which I do within my own classroom as well. Um, use those skills that you're hoping that the children have embedded do a dictation piece and this can just be a sentence or a couple of sentences and this allows you to actually look at those very specific targeted skills and have they actually really understood what they've learned there so have they learned the different ways of making the a sound have they um, fully embedded the idea of when you might use a colon have they understood all those things can they hear that when they um, say a sentence um, so it's a really, really good way of doing um, that and to check back on embedded knowledge, really. Would you recommend a teacher or Senko runs the programme or would it be OK for a TA to run it? Anybody can run the programme because the, the instructions are there. So it is that pick it up and run with it. Anybody can run it. I would suggest that it would probably be a teaching assistant within a classroom to do it. But as Pam said earlier, if you if you have a parent, a willing parent, or even with older children, if you're using it in a secondary school, you could use peer support um, because the instructions are there and the way of recording that progress are there. So it really can be run by anybody. Would you suggest teaching all staff to use Lexplo Intensive? Or would it be better to have one person become an expert in its delivery? It's certainly not going to do any harm to have everybody, uh, all the staff, up to speed with um, what's going on and it's always better when everybody's singing from the same hymn sheet. What I would suggest um, really is the fact that each individual part of Lexplore Intensive is incredibly self-explanatory. You're not taking away, it is a massive document in total, but you're never going to be sitting and reading the massive document. You're taking each stage as it comes and each stage is introduced very simply as it comes. What would be a nice thing would be almost to have your um, Lexplore expert. So that could be a TA who's particularly interested in, in phonics and they can be the one who kind of just looks in on other TAs to check that they're doing things accurately or that people can come to. But really, you could give this to, you know, back in the days pre-COVID when you had a granny who came in and read with the children, you could give that to her or and um, they would be able to, to follow that quite easily. Should I always start on the first page? Or should I assess where pupils are or what they can already read and start there? Explore Intensive links very directly with Lexplore Analytics. So the screening tool is very much a good starting point for those children. However, if you're not using Lexplore Analytics, that doesn't mean to say that you can't use Lexplore Intensive. There are lots of different ways you can work out where children are. Yeah, um, because of the, the links with letters and sounds, Although um, it doesn't exactly follow um, the same pattern as such, you could use wherever you feel that they're at. So for example, if they were working at phase two in letters and sounds, you could go to the red level and pick up from where they're at. And for anybody who's used to working with phonics, they will be able to see those links very clearly and very easily. Um, you know, use your, your phonics assessment as a gauge if you're not using the analytics tool. However, as, as Rachel said, that analytic tool is fabulous, it's incredibly quick and that will directly guide you straight to the level that you should be starting at for that individual. Why is Lexplore Intensive different to other programmes that might already be used in schools? The key thing to say about Lexplore Intensive is that we're not trying to be any of those other interventions or strategies used in school. A lot of the time you think, well, but what am I going to do next? Or how does this apply to what I'm doing in class? 
And I think that that is the key to like for intensive. We've kind of thought about that and thought, well, okay, if that bit isn't working, try this. And it's that multi-sensory aspect of it as well. I think the other aspect of like for intensive is the links to those supporting resources that we're taking it a step beyond, you know, just those basic reading skills. We're covering aspects such as memory, comprehension, and, you know, trying to broaden out the support that we're giving to those children, be they struggling readers or those readers that we need to challenge. I'd, I'd also just add to that, that that is the key there, that ultimately the majority of intervention programmes that are out there are specifically designed for children who are having difficulties learning to read. And Lex Four Intensive is different from that point of view because it covers that whole spectrum. When we designed this, when we put this together, it very much did become um, a document that we felt had somebody given this to us 20 years ago, we, we would have been over the moon because actually it would have answered so many questions for us. And, and it is that, it's that pick up and run with it yeah. aspect of it. And the lack of planning, yeah. but you don't need to plan. Yeah. You don't need to be a phonics expert. You don't need to go to 20 different places to get the information. It's a one-stop shop and that is, is invaluable actually in education. What are the main components covered in the programme? It looks at phonics, which are obviously the absolute building blocks of being able to read. It looks at um, decoding skills, it looks at blending skills, it looks at segmentation, syllabification, syllabification. Um, it, and then it goes on to um, the more complex areas where you're sort of looking at the grammar side of things about tenses. And as we all know, English is a completely beautiful language, but it's a massively hodgepodge language made of all different kinds of things. And so we frequently say, this is the way that we do things. These are the rules apart from when they're not. And again, Lexmore Intensive aims to attack, um, work with some of those areas and actually support children. So it might be looking at common past tenses and then the um, past tense versions that, that don't follow the rules as such. Um, it might be looking at homophones, it might be looking at homographs and um, things like that. The, the sorts of things that a lot of children, despite being very fluent readers struggle with these things because, again, it's a beautiful but incredibly complex language. How does Lexplo Intensive work for older pupils in a secondary classroom? If a child is struggling to read, if they're struggling to get those foundations in place, it really doesn't matter whether they are 17 years old or seven years old, they need to have those basics, um, those basic phonic skills in place. It's how it's delivered is the, the key there, that the way that you're working with a seven year old who is a real, uh, really struggling reader and the way you're working with a 17 year old struggling reader, you're still using the same material, but you're delivering it in a different way. And you know your children, so go with that. I think the other thing to add is, is the way that we've expanded it out to include subject specific information. So there may be uh, words relating to more science-based things. It's about how you, how, or hints and tips of how you could expand that to be subject specific. It is that principle of having those broader areas. So like we were saying with the homophones or subject specific spellings or correcting errors, you know, being able to actually edit work and, and proofread work and spot errors this is a really a much higher level. Being able to comprehend um, work that you're reading is a much higher level. Um, so those are all targeted within Lexmore Intensive.